So as I walked in, you guys are watching football, or is it both? Are you watching the same rugby. game? Rugby, football. Yeah, um, Wales is my rugby team, and they're not playing at the moment. Is that right? Wales is your rugby yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. Well, my family are Welsh. Yeah. Oh right. And so, what football team do you root for? Well, I'm a West Ham supporter, and we're playing right now, and we've just gone one nil up. So. It's nice being in the States because football's on really early in the day. Because I do like a... Yeah, that is nice. I do like a fantasy football league. And I've never done it before and I'm doing it this year for the first time. Which makes you more invested than ever. Yeah, it's great. Right. It's great. <laughs> and, you root, and you do rugby. Uh, rugby, it's the Six Nations is on at the moment, which is all the nations of the UK and then France and Italy. And it happens once a year and they all play each other once. So it's, it's a massive deal. It's like the Super Bowl, but for European rugby. Yeah, Got it. and harder. Yeah. Right, and wait, and you said you root for? Scotland. Got it. Uh, are they doing well? Uh, they are being beat at the moment by two points. Right, so you... that, that can turn around in an instant. I was gonna say, yeah, rug, rug, they score fast. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, so jumping in, first of all, awesome. I like talking about sports and I just know <laughs> nothing about rugby and uh, I know a little, but anyway, we're off on a tangent. So um, really great to see you guys again. Uh, I now have seen you more than some of my friends yeah, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that's very cool. How much fun did you have rocking the mohawk while you were filming? Um, I like it, a, I liked it a lot. Um, it's a kind of look that it, it subconsciously gives out a vibe which says, Please don't approach me. Yeah, and I really liked it. I like it a lot. I've done, I think I had one mohawk in my life before this one. Did you actually, when you took it out for a spin, like offset? Yeah. Did you notice people treating you differently? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I I did a thing a couple of years ago where I had to have a grill made, and uh, they let me keep it afterwards. And so whenever I travel through airports, I always put my grill in. Jesus. And no one ever. No Do you one. You never ever get. Did. You never get selected for random. Uh, I think they're afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, I get branded a lot. Right. <laughs> like, like British out, beef. Did you go out with the with the grill and the mohawk? Yeah. And? Oh, nothing. Just just left alone. It's great. Right, you should pick some fight next time at the bar and yeah. see if anyone would fuck with you. I'm going to come and get some grills now. I'm in NYC because there's some great grills here. Right. Uh, I watched the film again last night and I, I enjoyed it even more. And the thing that I, I took away from it uh, is just how well Steven balanced the humor and the heart. And it's loaded with really funny jokes and the crowd just ate it up. Can you sort of talk about how Steven, um, th that it's really funny, but it also, as I was saying, it, it, it balances that humor and heart. I, I think that's always the case in, in comedies. I, I grew up watching comedies. I, I was obsessed with them and I think when, when when the story then turns like into a darker point or, or, or becomes more touching, I think that the, the fall is always twice as hard if it's in a comedy, and I think it's almost twice as effective. I, I, I the, my, my 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 favorite comedies are, are not just my favorite because they're so funny, but because they make you cry, and I think. Um, particularly like stuff that Steven's done before. I think you can see that running all the way through it. Like it's all the way through The Office. Like The Office is a whole, it's a it's a love story, The Office, basically. That's just got funny bits either side. Um, so I think he's like, he's a bit of a master at that. Yeah, I think, I think comedically Steven lives in a dark place. You know, he dwells within the darkness, mm. like a lot of us do. And so com comedy wise, I think it's a lot easier to undercut uh, something which potentially could be too schmaltzy or too much heart, you know, it's easy to undercut that with comedy. And it's it's a nice thing to do because it makes you realise. But, uh, I, you know, I, I think like most comedies, it has to be funny uh, because if it's just schmaltzy and there's no comedy in it, 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 it just becomes kind of boring, you know what I mean? It, it's confusing to itself. It's also like, I think, conventional where like you've seen that done before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so you guys were at Sundance for the film. Looking back on it now, uh, what was that experience like? Because I saw nothing but positive stuff about the movie. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think this week particularly, after Sundance and things, I've just kind of been, uh, people really like it, you know, uh, and the rock's in it and it's like, oh, this could be really big, yeah. you know, it, it could could do great, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, and in, in, in the room it was it was amazing, like, and it's a very specifically British sense of humour that runs through it, but all the Americans got it. Yeah, 
I don't know if it was all Americans in that room, but they did get it. At least five. There were five, five Americans, yes, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I have a few what I call fun questions. Okay. Nothing to do with the movie. We'll see if you can. Uh, okay. Well, uh, what TV show would you both love to guest star on? Uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, the Young Offenders. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite sci-fi or fantasy film that's not called Paul? <laughs> <clears throat> sci-fi. You're not a sci-fi fan. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Uh, you're not a sci-fi fan. <laughs> um, fifth Element for me. Oh my god, yeah. I love the Fifth Element. Oh my god, yeah. I like any of the spaceship in. I've got to say. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite superhero movie? Uh, I'm a big, big fan of the Batman films. Uh, Howard the Duck. <laughs> uh, what film scared you as a kid? The Omen. I'm brought up Catholic, so I didn't realise that wasn't a documentary <laughs> until I was 15. <clears throat> uh, I, I had a big, uh, I had a, a bad encounter with an episode of Morse, which is a sort of running drama. In the, I, 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 I never watched scary stuff, and Morse was the sort of the height of, of, of where it got scary. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you collect? Uh, um, it, little tiny little figurines. I build like little Christmas villages at Christmas. You get oh, them in like cool. garden centers. Huh. It's really nice. Yeah, no, no. They're really cool. Um, uh, human fingers. <laughs> that explains everything about you. Um, do you remember your first movie or TV show crush? Oh, okay, so there was a lady. Uh, oh, oh, uh, Jenny Agatha. Uh, from. Um, I like how it's an immediate. Yeah, well, because I still. Yeah, Jenny Agatha. I remember watching, like, being a young man and watching um, uh, Werewolf in, American Werewolf in London, and then there's the sex scene where she's a nurse. It stayed with me forever. I'll never shake that image. Uh, uh, Raquel, who was Del Boy's wife in Only, in it, only Those Horses. horses. She okay. just was really classy. Maybe it was the context. I she... think she was filthy. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. had a real kind of she, yeah. Spain 1982 <laughs> vibe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, real bad in the bed sick kind of thing. <laughs> I have a million others, but I'm out of time. Okay. I will just say thank you for indulging me. Uh, congrats on the movie. Sincerely, I hope it's a huge hit. Thanks, man. Thank you very cool. much.